Hello and welcome to the digital presentation of Stories from Singapore. And today we have with us Tan Yu Ching, the composer for Part I and the Lalang, and Alexis Xia, the saxophonist for the piece. So Alexis, can you tell us a little bit? Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and what you're up to these days? Hi everyone, my name is Alexis. I am currently pursuing my Doctor of Musical Arts at the University of Oklahoma. And uh, I've been here for three years now and I'm excited to be presenting this piece by the lovely Tan Yu Ting. Yeah, hi, I'm Yu Ting. Um, I'm currently doing my PhD in music composition at the University of Chicago, currently in my fourth year, and it was really fun writing this piece for Alexis. Yeah, so Yuting, can you tell us more about this piece that you created? What is it about, what inspired it, and how did it evolve? Yeah, so... Um, when Samuel approached me about this project, he had a really clear theme for the whole project, which was stories from Singapore. And um, I was having quite a hard time actually looking for a story that um, I would like to write about or um, something from Singapore. So I actually went to a few exhibitions in Singapore and I came across one and this one was at the National Library and it was about how um, the natural habitat in Singapore has evolved over the years um, from you know the early days like more than 200 years ago and then until today. And at the exhibition I came across this poem <clears throat> La Lang by Lim Tian Su and I was really struck by this poem. Um, actually, I only came across like the second paragraph of the poem, the second stanza of the poem. And to me, it was um, the lalang is, is a native plant to our region, Malaysia and Singapore. And also in the poem, um, he talks about Chinese fleets, Malay drums, European cannon, samurai swords. And I felt that that was like a reflection of a specific time of Singapore's history. And, um, but at the same time, the Lalang still exists today. And um, there's almost a timeless quality to the poem as well. And I decided to um, structure my piece around the poem. Wow, so how was it like working with the saxophonist? What was your whole process of creation? Yeah, so um, I wrote the piece and sent it to Alexis and she played through uh, bits of the piece for me. And there were some um, sections that um, you know, required a little more communication. Um, for example, like there are a lot of parts of the piece where I wanted um, airy sounds. Um, and also in particular, there was like um, an air flutter sound that um, I had a really clear idea of what I wanted it to be. Um, and we had to go back and forth a little bit with that to um, really craft the sound that was that would work for Alexis and also um, would work for the piece. Yeah. Thanks. And Alexis, anything to chime in? Yeah, um, I had a lot of fun working with Yu Ting um, on, you know, just getting all this nice sound effect to really uh, capture in an audio recording because uh, the, the tricky part about audio recording is that all these little nuances are so soft and subtle that sometimes it's very hard to pick up on the mic with, uh, with the different gain levels that um, I've set. And uh, so, so we did manage to find a way that kind of uh, compromised that airy subtone texture that she had in her mind. 
and how to make how to realize that um that whole particular action into um the audio recording so uh so i i really like the whole process of this and i i just thought that um i i hope i did the piece justice <laughs> Yeah, and I remember um, one particular conversation that we have um, that we've been going through back and forth was the open slap thumb part. Yeah, because the tricky thing with audio recording is that it, it because it's such a percussive and big sound. Um, once it it once the articulation is being tackled, um, it actually clips off the audio clip. So <laughs> it was fun having to kind of like switch around the gain levels in between pieces just to make just to make this sound effect um, work, work well. But I really like the piece and I really like how the different three stanzas of the poem reflects the three distinct parts of the piece. Um, the piece starts off with this really nice airy subtone um, kind of like melody, like folk tune. And I, it just really mimics the, the lalang um, in the fields where air just pushes through at a random pace. And you kind of hear like the, the airiness and the subtone sound of the saxophone, kind of like the whisper in the wind along the, the grass, the lalang. And then it goes into this big kind of like slap tongue uh, section that mimics, you know, the people that come to sort of like collect the land or be part of the land and how it transitions back into the nature part. I, I thought that that was very, very well thought out. Yeah, and you did such an exquisite performance of the piece. So congratulations to the two of you. Um, well, before we listen to the piece, Yu Ching, could you recite the poem for us? This is Lalang by Lim Tian Su. Lalang. I dread no destruction, possess no emotion. I only exist on land. For I and the Lalang, burns to be born, born to be burned. No lesson need I learn. I have breathed since times the granite cooled its temper. The primal sun scorched me. I have traced the last oceanic invasion the ancient rains soaked me. Monster herds, human tribes, Chinese fleets, Malay drums, European cannons, samurai swords, did not they appear only yesterday? And I grew used to war, men's endless game. But I and the Lalang do not ever suffer. No wrong is done to me. I know no misery. I see the world change. I change not at all. I wear the evergreen, for I am the Lalang, that spreads across the Ladang, that outlives civilization, that cares not for time. <laughs> 